Well, good afternoon. How you all doing? Bless. I love that. It is good to see all of you. And Sister Sylvia, we're praying for you. Your strength in the Lord. Good to see you this afternoon. All right. So, uh, we will be looking at the book or the letter of Jude tonight after the worship. And Jude is the, the last book before Revelation is only one sheet. So if you're not careful, you might not find it. But if you find the last book of the New Testament called Revelation is the page before that. That's the book we're going to be looking at tonight, Jude. I am so excited to be teaching Jude tonight. And we're going to learn a lot from Jude who was Jesus' brother. He got a lot to talk to us tonight. So before that, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then after that, we'll get into a time of uh, worship, and we'll get into the Word of God. Please pray with me. Our most gracious, loving Heavenly Father, in the mighty, glorious name of Jesus Christ, the Savior, we come to you this afternoon, Lord, with our hearts full of thanks. Lord, we bless your name. Thank you for watching over us since morning. Thank you for keeping us and our families. And thank you, Lord, for bringing us back into your house. David declared, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. One day spent in your house is better than thousands of days out there. So, Lord, we honor you tonight. Your word tells us be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, we should make our request known unto you. So, Father, we come tonight asking you for help for many, many, many others in our church family who are not doing well. Remember tonight, Brother Winford and many others, Brother Marcus, Mr. Kirby, Judy, Joy, and many, many others who need a touch from you. Lord, we pray that you will touch every single one of them tonight. Lord, we pray that you will minister healing to your people, that you bring all of us in line with your perfect will. Lord, tonight, we pray that as we've come to you to worship and to sit under your feet to be taught of your word, I pray your Holy Spirit will have his perfect will in our time tonight. May everything that will be done here, Lord, bring glory to Jesus, the Lord. In his holy name, we are praying with thanksgiving. Amen. All right, thank you so much for praying with me. Shall we all stand as we... Welcome one another excitedly <laughs> in our beautiful church. Thank you for coming. Pastor, I know that here at First Baptist, our foundation is Jesus Christ. Yes. And there's only, that's what our hope is, that the hope is in Jesus Christ our Lord. But I know that's what this church does, yeah. is he is our foundation. So sing with us as we sing the solid Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest way, God only me on. Christ the soul, lay rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covered, not his blood, support me in the wealthy flood, when all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. Oh, Christ the 
solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, just in his righteousness alone. For blessed to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Now, that song is the theme of tonight's message. So, thank you, Eve, for allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you, to guide you, to know that's what Jude wants us to do. It's always to stand on the solid rock, which is God's word, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jude chapter 1, I want to take this opportunity whilst we're turning to Jude to welcome all our online church family and our guests and our friends around the world. Thank you for tuning in anytime our church door is open. You are hearing live from First Baptist Church, Stockbridge, Georgia. Thank you so much. We're praying for all of you and we are wishing all of you well. When the time is right, if you can come, we would love to have you come face to face to serve the Lord with us here in his church as we worship the Lord and to be used by him for his glory. Jude chapter 1, Jude chapter 1, throughout church history, the church has gone through a lot of persecution. Not just persecution, but the church has experienced a lot of false prophets who has come into the church to warn, to derail the people of God from the will of God. Jude's time, it wasn't different. It was the same. And Jude is going to speak to us, is going to speak to the church body, letting us know we must guide against false teaching and we must contend for the faith. That's the topic tonight, contend for the faith. That's stand in what you know God's word is and don't allow the enemy to come in and to derail your path. Jude, let's meet Jude. He's going to tell us who he is. Jude chapter 1 is only one chapter. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 16, Jude 1, 1 to 16, from the NIV. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called, who are loved by God the Father and kept by Jesus Christ, mercy Peace and love be yours in abundance. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago, have secretly slipped in among you. They are godless men who change the grace of our God into alliances for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord delivered his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, 
but abandoned their own home, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. Verse 8. In the very same way, these dreamers pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and slander celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not dare to bring a slanderous accusation against him by said, the Lord rebuke you. Yet these men speak abusively against whatever they do not understand. And what things they do understand by instinct, like unreasoning animals, these are the very things that destroy them. Woe to them. They have taken the way of Cain, they have rushed for profit into Balaam's heir. They have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. These men are blameless at your love feast, eating with you without the slightest crown. Shepherds who feed only themselves. They are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind autumn trees, without fruit and uprooted, twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shame, wandering stars for whom blacked darkness has been reserved forever. Enoch, the servant from Adam, prophesied about these men. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all the ungodly of all the ungodly acts they have done in the ungodly way. And of all the harsh words ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These men are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires and boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. But dear friends, Remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instinct and do not have the spirit. Amen? So a lot has been said by Jude. And Jude, his intention, as we're going to see, is to write about the common salvation that we have in the Lord. But the Holy Spirit directed him to do something else, to talk about the danger behind the pulpits across the world, the danger of false prophets who have sneaked in into God's church and how we are to stand firm on our belief and the faith we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. So come with me, let us go and meet Jude. Let us meet him. He's going to introduce himself to us and it's very important that we get to know him, understand him, that we can follow along with his teaching. He tells us, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. It is very important that we zero in on the word servant. Servant. Please underline that. Another word for servant, slave. Slave. He tells us he is a slave or a servant of Jesus Christ, and he gives us some clue about his family. He says, a brother of James. Every true 
minister of the gospel of God, everyone in leadership in God's church is a servant to serve God and to serve the people of God. When a pastor, especially in my country, Ghana, and I know there are some Ghanaians who, who might be listening tonight or who will listen to this teaching, we have false teachers in my country. And these people, not just my country, but around the globe, they want you to serve them. They make sure that when you come to them, you kneel to talk to a man, a human being. It happens in my country every day. And they demand service from you to them as God's chosen people or leaders. Jude tells us, along with Paul's writing and many others, Peter and the rest, they will always describe themselves as a servant. That is the truth. The Lord Jesus himself, when he came to the earth, he told us he has not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. It is important and it is also interesting to me that if Jesus, the God of all creation, tells us, the teachers, the pastors, the apostles, the preachers, that he has come not to be served and he has called us, it is important that we know what our position is in the Lord's church. And my position here is to serve the Lord and to serve the people of God. It is never about my show, but it is about the Lord's work and his glory. Amen? So Jude tells us he is a servant or a slave of Jesus Christ. Who? He is a slave of God. He is a slave of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. So let's go get some information about Jude. Now that he has introduced himself, let's find out his family. Uh, if you go with me to Matthew's Gospel, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13. Let's go meet Jude. We're going to look at verse 53 to 58. Matthew's Gospel, 13, 53 to 58. Matthew 13, 53. You see, when Jesus had finished these parables, he moved on from there. Coming to his hometown, he began teaching the people, <coughs> excuse me, in their synagogue. And they were amazed. Where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers, they asked? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? And aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Aren't all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, Only in his hometown and in his own house is a prophet without honor. And he did not do miracles there because of their lack of faith. So here, Matthew tells us the family of the Lord Jesus Christ. In mentioning the names of the family, one of them, he said Judas. That is Jude. So we do see Jude is a brother to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Along with Jude, Mary had other children, including women. We are told they were sisters and brothers of the Lord. Remember Mary was conceived by the Holy Spirit when, he was, when she was a teenager, and that's how the Lord Jesus was born. Not through a human coming together like man, man and woman or male and female, but in, in, conceived by the Holy Spirit. After that birth, after that birth, Mary knew Joseph. And they had other children. Here we are told by those audience in the synagogue, they say, we know his father, we know his mother, we know his brothers, we know his sisters. So that's your information. Jude was a brother to the Lord Jesus Christ. Please go back with me to Jude. So now that we know who he is, when he's writing somewhere in the scriptures, we are told that, Initially, his brothers did not believe in him. But later on, after his resurrection, then they came to faith in him. And that's what Jude is now one of the leaders of the church. And he has to write to us about salvation. But he changes it to talk to us about the importance of contending in the faith. Let's go back to Jude, please. So now it tells us, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. To those who have been called, please underline that word, called. That's me and you. He's talking to God's children. God's children. To those who have been called, who are loved by God the Father and kept by Jesus Christ. Powerful scripture here. When God called you and I, it means we have experienced his love. God's calling allow us to know him and experience his love. But most importantly, everyone God has called, listen carefully please, God through Jesus Christ, is going to keep that person to the end. <laughs> that means you are protected by God. How do I know, Pastor Emmanuel? Well, come with me to the same book, Jude, verse 24. Jude, verse 24. It's only one chapter. So, Jude chapter 1, verse 24. Jude continued telling us, To him who is able to keep you from what? Falling. And to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore. Amen. God, when he calls you and I, he will keep us to the end. If I were to ask you how many times in your life have you experienced a situation and you thought, hey, this is it, this is over? Are you still standing? You're still here. God keeps his children. He told us, I am the good shepherd and I lay down my life for my sheep. Psalms 23, we are told, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If you go into the Middle East and other places of the world where we have a shepherd looking after the sheep, the shepherd, when he takes the sheep to the field, never takes his eyes from them. He 
gaze at him. He watches them. He keep all the predators away from them. That's what a shepherd does. And the Lord Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. So be encouraged tonight. When you are a child of God, no matter what you go through in life, the Lord promised to keep us, to protect us, to watch over us. And Jude tells us we are kept by Jesus Christ. Verse 2, he says, mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. That's a promise I've claimed for myself. And I want you to claim it. For yourself. Mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. He is only writing to those who are called. That's you and I. Jude tells us, may God's mercy, may God's peace, and may God's love be ours in abundance. Look at verse 3 going. Say, dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation of we share. I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. The word saint is not special people, it's every child of God. For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are godless men, he describes them, who changed the grace of our God into alliances for immorality and deny, look at that word, deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. Very important. These are not people of the world. Jude is telling the church, these people once in their time, lifetime, accepted Jesus. These people walk in the aisle. They came forward to place faith in Jesus. As they went along, they have now turned against him. They've now turned their back on him. They've now denied him. There is an example in the Bible. And the person's name is Judas. It's called apostasy. Judas was one of those 12 apostles. Judas was sit on a table with the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes to have fellowship with his apostles. Judas was one of the inner circle, the 12. Later on, Judas turned his back. And deny the Lord. Look at the end of Judas. He went and killed himself. Jude is telling us that there are people in the church who have now turned their back on the faith. They've denied Jesus Christ and now they've become his enemy. The question is, how can this be? How can a person place faith in Jesus and still turn their back on him? That means the day they said they have accepted Jesus Christ was not true. The faith was not genuine faith. Because Jude, the same, tells us that if there is a genuine faith, God is able to keep us to the end. The fact that they abandoned the faith means they are false prophets who came in to be part of the ship. The scriptures has a lot to speak about the church paying attention to people like that in the pulpit. If you go with me to Galatians chapter 1, Galatians chapter 1, it is all over the place, and the church must guide against false teachers 
who are not on the Lord's side and who want to come in to affect the faith of the genuine Christians in the church. That's why it's very important where you get your teachings from. And it's all over our TV screens these days. They are all over our radio screens these days. And how to guide against them is to stay close to this word. Because when you stay close to God's word, you will know if it is true or lies. Most of the people that these false preachers take advantage of them are people who are not staying in God's word. So anything they hear, they just accept it. But church, there is a truth and there's a deception out there. And God wants us to be warned against that. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, please. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. Paul is writing to the church in Galatia, a real body of Christ. They've been going through false teachers and they are almost about to be derailed from the path the apostle brought to them. Listen to how strong he's going to warn them to be careful. Galatians 1 from verse 6 going, he says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to what? A different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned. As we have already said, so now I say it again. If anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than that you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. Church, false teaching, a false prophet is always a threat to the church. And Jude is writing to us to always contend for the faith. That means stand in the word of God and stand on the rock that we sang tonight, which is Jesus Christ and nobody else. Nobody else. Please go back with me to Jude. He's going to now describe for us in detail some, uh, the future, the future of these false teachers, an example of what God has done already when it comes into God punishing those who are against him. Punishing and judging those who are against him. So look with me from verse 5, Jude 1, 5 going. He says, though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord delivered his people out of Egypt but later destroyed those who did not believe. Please underline that phrase, did not believe. That means they turned back against the Lord. Verse 6. And the angels who did not keep their position of authority, but abandoned their own home, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. Revelation speaks about that. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah. How many of you have heard about Sodom and Gomorrah before? All right, We're all very familiar with that. He said he's reminding us what God has done already. In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment 
of eternal fire. Now, let me pause here for a minute. Sodom and Gomorrah were involved in an act of immorality and all kind of sins, homosexuality and the rest, and God was not pleased and therefore God rained down, brainstormed fire to destroy them. Is in the word of God. In the time of Noah, Noah's time, he was living among people who were evil. And God wanted to preserve uh, uh, Noah and his lineage. And therefore, he asked him to build a boat. And God built a, a boat for Noah and put Noah and all the animals in the boat, Noah, Noah and his family. And for 40 days and 40 nights, God opens the floodgates of heaven. Rain came down and destroyed everybody. Noah and his family and the animals in the ark were secured. Then God did something. He put a rainbow in the sky and said, never again will I destroy the earth with water. But when God brought the fire from heaven to destroy the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, he didn't give any sign that he wouldn't do it again. That means hell, which is a place of eternal fire, will happen again. Because God did not exempt the, 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 the instrument he used to destroy man, but for water. He said, no more. And Jews said, I want to remind you that fire has destroyed the earth he didn't mention the water. Because the water will not happen again. Church, we have to take God seriously. And we have to be so glad that we are saved. He continues. Let me wrap it up. Look at verse 8 going. In the very same way, these dreamers pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and slander celestial beings. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not dare to bring a slanderous accusation against him, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Yet these men speak abusively against whatever they do not understand. And what things they do understand by instinct, like unreasoning animals, these are the very things that destroys them. Woe to them. Now he's going to give us other examples that we are familiar in the Old Testament. They have taken the way of Cain. Cain is one of the first uh, children of Adam and Eve. You know, Adam and Eve had two children, Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel. And here, Jude reminds us of what Cain did and the punishment God gave him. They have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's arrow. They have been destroyed in Coral's rebellion. All these people are in the Old Testament. They are rebellion towards God and what God did. Look at verse 12. These men are blemished at your love feast, eating with you without the slightest qualm. Shepherds who feed only themselves, they are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind, autumn trees, without fault and uprooted, twice dead. They are wild waves of the sea, foaming up their shame, wandering stars for whom blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Enoch, the servant from Adam, prophesied about these men. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to commit all the ungodly, of all the ungodly acts they have done in 
the ungodly way. Now rush with me quickly because of time from verse 20. Because we do know that God will take care of business. God will judge them. So what is left for me and you to do? But you, say I. <laughs> Dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. What do you do when you know that there is false teaching and false prophet all over the place? What do you do as a child of God? Here Jude tells us, build yourself in the faith. That means spend time in God's word. Meditate on God's word. Treasure God's word. Pray as you wait for the Lord Jesus to come back. That's all we have to do. As the Lord tarries, as there's a threat to his church about false prophet, Jews said, don't get involved. I stay alert Stay in the word of God. Pray, pray, pray as you wait for the Lord Jesus to return. He already told us in verse 20 that God will keep us. God will keep us to the end. So let me ask you, beloved. Whom are you following out there these days? Who is your teacher? Whom do you give your attention, your undivided attention to? If you call yourself a child of God, it is very important that you stay with the Lord Jesus. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. There is nothing else out there for you as a child of God. Say, Pastor Emmanuel, what about if I don't know Jesus? This is the time to think very well. That one of these days, you will exit this planet. There's something called death. One of these days, you will exit the planet. But before you exit, you have to make sure you have made peace with God. Because we are going to stand before the Lord. And we're going to give an account of the life that we had here on earth. I commend to you tonight, Jesus Christ, the Lord. If you don't know him, you can ask him to forgive you of your sins. Repent of your sins and ask him to be the Lord of your life. He will. He will take you in and be the Lord of your life and you will know God as a father. And how grateful we are to you tonight, Lord, for the lessons, for the teachings, for the admonitions, for the warnings. Lord, we thank you for our brother Jude, who is one of us, your servant serving you in your church. Tonight, we, he has opened to us your will. Even as he told us, we are to contend for the faith. We are to be watchful. We are to persevere. Lord, I pray, as you have instructed us, that we belong to you, and therefore you, Lord, is able to keep us. May we always remember and rely on your faithfulness and your keeping power, no matter the challenges that will come our way. And Lord, we look forward to your second coming, to receive your church, to receive us in your presence. We pray all this 
In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Please stand with me. As 1 Corinthians 4, 2 says, for all the, us that have been the, given a trust, mm. we must be faithful. Amen. We must be faithful. So sing with us as we sing, find us faithful. comes your way. You have a faithful, powerful God and he is for you. Have a blessed afternoon.